Hello, my name is Justin McClellan. I'm doing my first video blog contribution post to Steph Davis's website, flipthiswholesaler.net. So what I'm going to talk about is some methods to find cash buyers. Some of them I've used, actually the majority of them I have, and uh, I'm going to share with y'all some things and also show y'all some things on the uh, on the computer to kind of give you an interactive aspect and kind of walk you through some things. Um, this actually is in response to one of her videos that she did, I think it was like two, two months ago or something like that, where she explained how she uses the MLS to obtain cash buyers. And we had chatted online about it back and forth since then. And so here's a video to to give my experiences and whatnot and my ideas. So since this is the big time, I even got a clipboard with notes on it and stuff. You should be impressed. <laughs> That's as cocky as I get. So anyway, here it is. Um, number one, this is actually Steph's idea. And then I'm going to expand on it. But the first idea out of seven or eight is to go to houses that have been bought with cash and you would find the houses that have been bought with cash through the MLS. You basically search on the MLS and you'll be able to see what type of what type of funding was used to close the deal. For those, let's say you go back two months, for those that were closed with cash, you would drive to the property. You drive to the property. If it's a rehab, then chances are you're gonna see a, uh, some contractors. What Steph used to do, or still does, is stops by, chats it up with the contractors, says, hey, you know, I'm an investor. Uh, I see that you, you just recently, I don't know how much she discloses about how she found out, but I guess if it were me, I'd say, hey, I'm an investor. Um, I see that you're, you're working on this house. Looks like you're doing a flip here. You're fixing it up. Who, who's the, the man behind, or the woman, behind this project? And uh, find that out. If they're not there, leave them your card. They call you back. You got another cash buyer. So that works if you're full time. And I'm not. So I got a nine to five that's just monopolizing 45 hours out of my week. So I can't do that driving. So this is the this is the alternative to that. What you would do is you would still find out which properties were closed with cash through the MLS. However, I'm going to take it a step further. So you find out which properties were closed with cash, but here's the thing. You'd be surprised on how many people buy houses cash nowadays. So what you would want to do is cross-reference that property against your county assessor's website. So you want to make sure that that person who closed with cash is not an, is not an owner-occupant of that property. So you go to your county assessor's website, you look up the address, and then you can see, okay, John Doe bought this property with cash, well, you won't see that on the assessor's website, but John Doe bought this property, and I can see that his mailing address is different from the property address. That's the key. That pretty much will tell you. And it'll especially tell you, it's a strong indicator, if the, the actual property or the mailing address is a P.O. box or something like that. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, you just want them to be different. And uh, let's say you do that. So you find out... John Doe bought this property cash. His mailing address is different. And you can't drive by because you're at work. So what you would do is you would you would then just basically just take the address and mail them something. Or you can take it a step further. You can get on Google, and I found a lot of I've had a lot of luck this way. You get on Google and you and you basically do a Google search on this person. You say John Doe, let's say you're in Chicago. You say John Doe. Chicago, Illinois, and since John Doe is such a common name, you may say, John Doe, Chicago, Illinois, real estate, and see what you come up with. You may just get a phone number, and I, I, I'm guaranteeing you, you'll find out more about John Doe than he probably would want you to find out about him on the internet. you probably find out where he works, the church he goes to, um, how much he, I mean, all kinds of stuff. So anyway, you kind of got to think like a private eye when doing some things. Just think outside of the box. And just really, really delve into some of these things. So that's what I would do um, as someone who's not a full-time real estate investor yet. Just look up their information. Worst case scenario, you got their address. Best case scenario, you can get their phone. 
maybe find out where they work, call them at work, I don't know. But you can find out a lot of stuff. So that's number two. Next thing, Section 8. A lot of Section 8 landlords are going to be cash buyers. Because just think about it. If you're a Section 8 landlord, you're buying, well, well typically you're going to have properties to rent for Section 8 in um, a lower income neighborhood. Lower income neighborhood means property values aren't that high. Property values aren't that high means you could, more people can afford to buy them with cash. So here's what you do. Put on your, your private eye, your detective hat. This is what I did. You call up the Section 8 office. You say, hey, my name's Justin McClellan. I'm looking to buy, I'm not looking to buy anything actually, but I'm looking to offer properties for Section 8. So I have, I have let's say, three or four rentals. And uh, I actually want to try the Section 8 thing out. Can you send me an information packet? And can you send me a list of all the properties that are currently available for rent? through section 8. Now you have to be you have to get creative sometimes because you, you call some of these places especially these government offices and you gotta go through some red tape sometimes jump through some hoops know how to phrase your questions correctly so you don't get shut down maybe talk to four or five people but what I did and how I got successfully through is pose as a as a potential landlord and ask for some information now I don't even think they're supposed to give you that list but that's, that's what I had to do to get it. And plus, I don't believe in lying, but I didn't, I didn't lie. In 2045, I might just offer a property Section 8. Or I may do it next year. Who knows? They can't tell me what I'm about to do. So, that's what I did. And here's what I got. So, I got this in the mail. And got my ownership handbook. Who cares about that right now? I got application who cares but this is what we want see all this yeah it's like a spreadsheet mm-hmm probably not supposed to have this but guess what it tells me available units accepting section 8 currently available it gives me the address the city bedroom bath dwelling type the amount of rent the contact person's name and their phone number. Wow. Phone number. So try that out. Um, moving on, number four, apartment association. Now in your town you may not have a uh, you may not have like an apartment association that's titled that way, but here in Champaign we got what is it titled? Central Illinois Apartment Association, CIAA. In your town, it may be the apartment or landlord association, or it may be something else. If you don't have a landlord association, it, you could probably just try your RIA group. We don't have one of those here, so I have to get, you know, do the next best thing. So anyway, you uh, get on your apartment association website, and nine times out of ten, I won't, I won't say nine times out of ten. Let's say, let's say six times out of ten, if you go to any type of, of organization website, you'll be able to find out some, uh, some pretty detailed information that I'm sure their members wouldn't want all out on the website, like their name, their address, their phone number, the email address. They'll, they'll just list the roster. So anyway, that's how the Champaign, Illinois, or the Central Illinois Apartment Association is. You go to their website, it shows all the members' information. Like, okay, that's great for me. Sucks for them, but... Uh, yeah.